Good morning, children. Welcome back to the English class. As I told you earlier, we are going to do a quick revision of the lessons we had done before the revision for unit test started, and which lessons are included in our terminal exam syllabus. Yesterday, we completed the quick recap of Abu Ben Adam. And today we are going to start recapping the next one. The next lesson, that is lesson six from your real English book, is David begins a new life, part one. This lesson is an extract from a very famous novel. The title of this novel is David Copperfield, written by Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens is an all-time favorite writer who has written many books. David Copperfield is his eighth book. Many scholars believe that there are many similarities between the character of David Copperfield and the writer Charles Dickens. His childhood incidents and David Copperfield's incidents in his life when he was a child, there's a great resemblance. And so we can say that this is a semi-autobiographical novel. He has taken many of his incidents from his life and introduced them or included them in the novel. Now this one is an extract from this novel David Copperfield and David is the narrator of this story. It is narrated in the first person. Narrator being David, he brings out his feelings, his emotions, with whatever had happened in his life. Now, in the novel David Copperfield, the writer, that is Charles Deacons, tells the story of David from childhood to maturity. Maturity means till he became an adult, till he grew up. David was born in 1820 and his father passed away before he was born. After his birth, his mother remarried. Of course, after seven years of his birth, she married a person called Edward Murdstone. David and Mr. Murdstone did not like each other. Why David did not like his stepfather? There was a reason for it. The stepfather used to be very cruel to him. Especially when he did not do well in his studies, the father, the second father or the stepfather used to thrash him very badly. Once what happened? David got very angry as well and he bit his stepfather when the stepfather was thrashing him. Bit of course is the past tense of bite. And so, Mr. Murdstone got so furious, he sent him to a boarding school called Salem House. Now, in those days, the condition of the boarding schools was not good. And there were many, many children who led very uncomfortable lives there. He was there. And there was a ruthless headmaster. His name was Mr. Creacle. When he was in Salem House, his mother also passed away. So when his mother was no more, he was called back home. And then Mr. Murdstone decided not to send him back. He decided that he would go and work in a factory in London. David started working in a factory in London instead of going back to study. Here his boss or the owner of the factory 
he got bankrupt he was bankrupt and so he was in prison now there were only two options before david either he could go back to his stepfather or he could run away now going back to his stepfather was a very bad option so what he did was he decided to run away and he did not know where to run away to and only one relative he thought could help him and that relative was his aunt betsy who lived in dover so he decides to walk all the way from london to dover now after this introduction the story is in detail and as i told you it is being narrated by david himself so wherever you have the words my i when you are writing answers you cannot write in the first person it has to be changed to the third person you can write instead of my journey his journey or david's journey so please remember whenever answers have to be written they have to be written in the third person and in the past tense now he says david says that his journey from london to dover was a very difficult one there were many things which happened on the way first as soon as he started the journey he was robbed and the little money he had was also lost now he had no money left with him so he did not have any place to go to because he had no money to pay he slept in hay stacks that lay in deserted barns there were barns where hay stacks were kept which were not used any more and he used to sleep there and he also faced a lot of dangers he got a 6 mile ride in a cart that is the only distance he could cover in a cart the rest of the way he had to walk his shoes were in a very bad condition his cap was all dirty and frayed and he looked miserable in the clothes which he was wearing because his clothes were torn and very dirty and they were dirty because of the heat the dew and the grass while he was looking for aunt betsy's house on reaching dover because he didn't know exactly where the house was luckily he found her maid now this maid took her took him sorry to aunt betsy's house now as soon he entered the garden gate he saw a man a spectacled man with a confused look standing and looking from the upstairs window and at the same time on hearing the sound of the garden gate open a lady appeared at the door instantly as soon instantly means as soon as he saw the lady he was sure that this was his aunt betsy who just walked out of the house now he had not seen aunt betsy at all because she had visited them when he was born he was a new born child so how could he recognize her he could have recognized her because his mother used to tell stories about aunt betsy used to talk a lot about aunt betsy and from the description of his mother he could recognize aunt betsy as soon as he saw her now looking at him aunt betsy shouted go away no boys here that means she did not allow boys to come to her place if you please ma'am david pleaded david pleaded to let him in and to come to her and then he told her that he was his nephew now when he said he was his nephew aunt betsy was very very surprised she was so surprised that she started feeling weak and she had to sit down right on the garden path she was in the garden and she felt so weak 
and without energy that she had to sit there to regain her energy then by the time she was sitting david continued he introduced himself told aunt back betsy who he was he said that he was david copperfield of blunderstone in suffolk and he reminded her of the time she had come to see him when did aunt betsy come to see him she had come to see him when he was born and she had also come to see his mother now after that after that he says that his life has been very unhappy he has been put to shame he has been put to all kinds of troubles and so he could think of nothing else but to run away to her now when he was telling aunt about the journey he broke into tears he started crying remembering the troubles he had in the past and then he fell on his knees and put his head on her warm lap she called out for a gentleman to assist her now she called that gentleman who was there standing near the window and she called to him and she asked him that i have already told you about my nephew david copperfield so you, you have heard me mentioning him a number of times now mr dick did not remember her mentioning the nephew but then miss betsy continued to speak in spite of a confused look perplexed means confused look on his face so she tells mr dick that he has run away now what should i do with him she wanted him to suggest a way dick suggested that the first thing she should do was to immediately send him for bath because he was in such a dirty and bad condition so he was sent to have bath but then as you know he had run away he had no clothes so mr dick gave his shirt and a pair of trousers to wear then he was also covered with two shawls and he was felt so comfortable and so relaxed he went off to sleep till he woke up for dinner now the dinner had not tasted so good from a very long time because he had never got such good food in the recent past then he again narrated his past in as much detail as he could remember and he was also anxious regarding his future he told auntie about aunt about the past he was very worried anxious means very worried about his future but then he did not mention his future the next day he came to know he learned means he came to know that aunt betsy had written to his step father that david had run away and come to her house now this thought that the step father may come and may take him back was really very scary for david so he spent his days worrying about the fact that any day his step father would show up and take him back but in the meantime he had become very friendly with mr dick and mr dick had also become very fond of him they ha- shared a common hobby and that common hobby was flying kites so this was a great comfort his friendship with mr dick was a great comfort to him during this time one day miss betsy asked david what he thought of mr dick so david said he he was a very nice man and then miss betsy told david how mr dick had started living in her house she told him the story how his own brother had declared him insane insane means mad in the past many people declared their relatives mad so that they could take away their property their wealth 
or their land or their house. Now, when she heard distant means he was not a close relative, he was distantly related to her. But when she heard that what his own brother had done, she went and got Mr. Dick to her place. And from that time till the time David reached there, it was almost 10 years. And for the past 10 years, this distant relative had been staying with Miss Betsy. Now, after listening to her story, David thought very highly of his aunt and developed even more affection for her. Now, the next day, Mr. Murdstone rode into the gate. That means he came to Aunt Betsy's house with his sister, Miss Murdstone. Now, Miss Murdstone, first she scolded Miss Betsy. Why blamed or criticized her? Why? Because she allowed her donkey to trample the edge of her lawn. There was very nice green grass in her lawn and she allowed the donkey to walk all over it, spoiling the green grass. Then she called for David. She called David to come and meet the visitors. Now, who were the visitors? Mr. Murdstone and his sister. Now, Mr. Murdstone expressed his great displeasure regarding his behavior. As soon as he saw David, he started complaining about David. He started criticizing David's behavior. He said, this boy has caused a lot of trouble for me in the past. He's very rebellious. He is not obedient. That means he doesn't follow any rules. And he has a violent temper. That means he used to get very violent when he was angry. We have tried to correct all these things, the bad qualities in him. But it is useless. He doesn't change. In turn, then auntie, of course, knew that the stepfather was telling lies and criticizing him useless, be uselessly because David had already told his story to auntie. So auntie just asked a question. She said if he had been his own son, would he have beaten him and sent him off and sent him off to a house in London at such a tender age means at such a young age. Now, Miss Murdstone replied before her brother could reply. And she replied very sharply. That means very um, impolitely. She said, if this boy had been my brother's son, his character would have been different. He would be a very good boy, not a naughty and bad and rebellious boy like David. Now, Mr. Murdstone added that he would take him back but then he would get rid of him in any way he wanted. Now, auntie knew that these people were not to be trusted and they may treat him badly. So she at once informed the two visitors that she had no intention. She did not plan to send David back with them. Instead, she had decided to keep David with her and to be his guardian. And then both Mr. Murdstone and Miss Murdstone left. After Miss Betsy said goodbye, dear, uh, good day, sir, and goodbye. Now, then she looked at Miss Murdstone and she said, good day to you, ma'am. But if your donkey now rides over my green that means the grass in the lawn or the green plants, I'll knock off your bonnet. Bonnet is the small hat on top people used to wear in those days with their gown. And I would knock your bonnet off your head and trample up and tread upon it like they are trampled on the grass. She would walk on the bonnet and it would get spoiled as her grass had got spoiled. Once the mirth stones had gone, then aunt turned to Mr. Dick and said, Will you consider being David's guardian jointly with me? 
she asked mr dick if he would be david's guardian jointly they would both be his joint guardians now mr dick was very happy with this offer he said he would be delighted to be the guardian of such a bright young man now with a deep sigh of relief that means aunt was very relieved to hear this from mr day and she said then everything is settled and he is going to stay with us we are both going to be his guardians and he is going to spend the rest of his days with us he was so happy that means david was so happy hearing this he hugged his aunt and kissed her many times because he was so grateful and he was so happy he shook mr dick's hands repeatedly he was delighted to have the two of them as his guardians and from this day onwards a new life began for him now this is just an extract of the story david copperfield children who are interested after we have completed the second part there's a lot in the novel we are going to do the second part very soon but before and after there's a lot of interesting Uh, things mentioned in the novel so if you have the time and you have the book please read the novel it's going to be very interesting now let us come to exercise a1 which of course you have already done but a quick recap of these and then we are going to go to a2 now the first one that is a1 is miss betsy had first seen david when had she first seen david when he was born at blunderstone suffolk david was made to work where was david made to work david was made to work in a factory in london so david was there working in a factory in london so we just write david was made to work in a factory in london by nature third one by nature miss betsy was people looked at her and they thought she was very strict and maybe hard hearted but in reality she was very soft hearted and we know that she was kind and she was compassionate after reading what she did for mr dick and for david so by nature miss betsy was very kind and compassionate you can also write good hearted on his arrival at his aunt's house david was given as soon as he arrived at his aunt's house what was he given he was given a bag and then he was given a shirt and a pair of trousers that belonged to mr dick to wear because he had no, no clothes of his own the last one in this mr murdstone attitude towards david was now attitude or how he behaved that is his stepfather so mr murdstone's attitude towards david was harsh and cruel we can also write inconsiderate hard hearted he was very hard hearted as well now the three options which you could write are harsh and cruel or inconsiderate now the second one that is a2 you have a short extract from the story and then you have to tick the correct option now let me read the first one one day miss betsy asked me what do you think of dick i replied he was very he is very nice david found dick to be a nice person because he was a intelligent b a good companion c helpful d strange now here i want to remind you that you could have more than one correct answer now what do you think are or is the correct option yes b and c 
a good companion and helpful now number 2 fortunately mr dick grew fond of me and i got to spend some time with him the memorable moments that i shared with mr dick whose passion for flying kites was insurmountable eased my discomfort to some extent now he says eased my discomfort the question asks what was david's discomfort a having to go to school b not being able to adjust with the character of mr day c the prospect of meeting his stepfather and d missing his friends at work now we know it was not having to go to school he would have loved to go to the school mr dick and david had adjusted very well to each other they were friendly and he was not missing his friends at work because it is not mentioned whether he had any friends or not so the prospect of meeting his stepfather was the one discomfort whatever he did he was scared about the prospect of meeting his stepfather A3 is answer the following questions madam had told you the page number where you could look for the answers and she had also asked you to frame the answers and then write them down in your notebooks tomorrow please keep your notebooks with you wherever you have written the answers to these questions and your real english book ready tomorrow we are going to do the answers discuss the answers which you have already done then we are going to discuss the vocabulary section and do the listening skill as well so please keep your real english your notebook and a pencil ready whenever we have a class tomorrow thank you children see you next time take care